All right, this is part two of section 10.7 on polar curves. So our main objective today is gonna be just to continue to graph polar equations. I'm just gonna show you some, I think, really cool shapes today. Um, the first one is gonna be the spiral of Archimedes. So let's start here with graphing R equals theta. So we learned in our previous lesson that whenever you wanna graph a polar equation, um, it's best to set up a, a graph of a rectangular equation first. So you treat this as if it were a rectangular equation and you create a reference graph for yourself. So if we wanted to do that here, we have our theta and our r axis. Well, this graph isn't that, that helpful to us because this is just um, the graph of a linear function through the pole, right? It's just like y is equal to x. So what this is saying is that as theta is increasing, r is increasing. So that is helpful. But it, it also indicates that if we plug in a uh, value of theta as pi over 2, well, that means that r is also pi over 2. So we have our coordinate pi over 2 comma pi over 2. So it's not that this isn't wrong to graph a reference graph that looks like this. It just doesn't really help us unless we find specific points on our graph. So instead, we're just going to jump right to the polar form. Okay. So again, you could graph <clears throat> a reference graph in rectangular form first, but we can just jump right to the polar form. All right, so I'm going to set up a polar coordinate system, which really looks no different than a rectangular one. Okay, it's just that we uh, use integer values, typically, in our polar coordinate system here that indicate a circle with, you know, here, a radius of 3 centered at the pole, right? Well, instead of using integer values, I'm going to pick convenient values here to represent those little increments because I know that if I plugged in theta is equal to pi over 2, I end up with an r value of pi over 2. So I want to make this as easy as possible for myself. Pi over 2 is just a real number. It's a, it's a number that, uh, it's a value, it's not an angle input. This is a distance from the pole, okay? So I can actually show pi over 2 units away from the pole if I just label that um, hash mark here as pi over 2. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick convenient values, okay? And the reason why 1, 2, 3, those are not convenient is because um, drawing in one radian, so a, a theta value of one radian, that's difficult for us to approximate, or two radians, or three radians, but approximating pi over 4 radians, that's way easier for us. So that's what we're going to do. So I'll pause the video now, and I'm going to create that polar coordinate system. All right, so there's our um, polar coordinate system set up. Now, as you can see, I only went two pi um, units away from the pole, uh, but that's a little bit misleading because in this particular case, this function r is equal to theta is not like what we graphed yesterday. Remember how yesterday when we graphed something like r equals two times the sine of theta? Um, for these, all I cared about was theta values between zero and two pi, okay? But that was because a sine function is periodic. And once we get through, um, once we make one rotation around our polar coordinate system, our r values get repeated, right? Well, here, if we keep increasing our theta value, so let's say um, theta is 4 pi, well, now r is 4 pi units away from the pole. So that value continues to increase forever and forever, okay? So this, like I said, it's a little bit misleading that I went up to 2 pi, but I'm, I'm just going to show you um, just certain values here, and then we're going to um, infer what happens as we increase theta, okay, and unbounded, right? Theta is unbounded in this case. Okay, so I know I've done a lot of talking here. Let's actually try to graph this for once. Um, so let's start here first with a theta value of zero because um, we know, we always want to find the zeros of the function, but we know that when theta is zero, r is going to equal zero, okay? Now, when theta increases to, let's say, pi over four, we are pi over four units away then from our uh, pole. So we have the point that would represent um, our spinner at pi over 4. Well, we have the point pi over 4, pi over 4, okay, right here. Now, as that spinner continues to rotate counterclockwise, if we are now pointing at pi over 2, we end up at an r value of pi over 2. So we're here now. That's where our point is going to be graphed. So let's connect this now. So as it rotated from 0 to pi over 4, the r value is increasing steadily, and it continues to increase, okay, till we get to pi over 2 units. Now, um, again, as we continue to increase and rotate that angle, okay, at 3 pi over 4, now we're 3 pi over 4 units away. So let's say we're, there's our 3 pi over 4 hash mark. We're right about here now, okay? So let's now continue to, to uh, connect these values with a smooth curve. All right, now, um, once I'm at uh, facing, my spinner here is facing pi, now I am pi units away from my pole. And I hope you can see that now the next the next um, obvious coordinate that you could graph, well, it could be, I guess, um, 5 pi over 4. So let's do that one real quick. So 5 pi over 4 is about right there. OK, 
Okay, so there. And then uh, 3 pi over 2. So here's 3 pi over 2. And then over here we could do 7 pi over 4 if we wanted to, since I make mark those off. So about right here. And then finally 2 pi. Okay, now like I said, I, I didn't um, go past 2 pi units, but if we were to continue to increase here, so that would what put us at, let's say, 5 pi over 2. Let's say we have a, a theta value of 5 pi over 2. Well, then here on this axis, I want to indicate 5 pi over 2. So the next point, I would connect these with a smooth curve because this is continually increasing till we get to 5 pi over 2 and so on. So as you can see, you're forming this really cool spiral as you increase theta values, and it's going to just continue to do that forever and forever. So I don't know. I think those are really interesting graphs. Um, I'm just going to stop like at two pi. Now, in some cases, you might be restricted to theta values specifically within you know a certain interval. So just always pay attention to that. Okay. Now I'm going to switch over, and we're going to try to graph r equals negative theta. Okay, so we're going to graph r equals negative theta. Now, I just want to talk real quick about our polar coordinate system here. This one is a little less detailed than the last graph, and this is actually what I would prefer you to graph. You don't have to get crazy detailed and have, you know, all those values like pi over 4 radians graphed, because um, really it's only important what happens at your axes. So that's why I'm, I'm doing increments of pi over 2 here, okay? All right, now this one's a bit trickier. r equals negative theta is a bit trickier because when I, I plug in um, a theta value that is positive, right, as we increase from 0 to 2 pi, we have positive values. So if theta is, let's say, pi over 4, we end up with an equivalent equation here that would make r negative. So we have negative pi over 4. Now, we know that when we graph um, uh, you know, an r value that's negative, it goes in the opposite direction of pi over 4. So here's our spinner here pointing at pi over 4. Well, now we're on the tail end, okay? So we would actually be plotting this point. Whoops, well, here's pi over 4, right? That would be about pi over 4. We'd actually plot this point here first, okay? So in this case, we're, we're reflecting every single point that we, we graphed in our first graph, okay? So let's, uh, let's go through this. We're going to start at the pole. Okay, that's our easiest point to graph, 0, 0. Now, as we increase, right, this direction, everything that would be graphed in here is now reflected over here. Okay, so if we want to connect these two points that we just plotted, the, the pole here and negative pi over 4, pi over 4, I want to make sure you understand how that it's rotating and how it's being reflected. So as we increase theta and it spins, our spinner here is pointing at uh, pi over 4, we're on the tail end, that's where our point is which means that everything inside here has been reflected, okay, tail end over here, it's in between here. So that means that when we connect these, it's going to look like that, okay? Now, um, the next significant point that I can plot would be when the spinner, as it continues to rotate, um, is at pi over 2. Okay, when theta is pi over 2, we have an r value of negative pi over 2, so again, we would have to go on the tail end. So our spinner's pointing this way, tail end is down here. We are at pi over 2. So there's our next point. Okay, so we're connecting it through here. Now, um, as, as the spinner points at pi, so now we're here and we increase counterclockwise. Now our spinner is pointing at pi, tail end needs to be plotted over here because we're at negative pi, pi. So we plot that tail end. All right, next point. As we rotate through, now we get to 3 pi over 2. At 3 pi over 2, we're on the opposite side, on the tail end, tail end side. Let me erase a bunch of this. This is so messy. So we're here now. So we'll connect. All right, so as you can see, it's basically the same shape, just, um, oops, oh, it's kind of flat there. We're still getting a spiral, okay? Um, and obviously, this is going to continue to increase, so that next value would be negative 5 pi over 2, right? 2 pi plus another pi over 2. And we're here now, okay? So at 5 pi over 2, radian measure, where we have um, an r value of negative 5 pi over 2. So we're plotting here, and it just continues forever and forms a really cool shape again. Okay, so now let's try um, some alterations of those 
those spirals. All right, in our next graph, we're, we're trying to graph r equals 2 theta. Now, this is really, really similar to a. Um, it's just that now, as our theta values increase, r is increasing twice as fast. So if theta is pi over 4, now we have an r value of pi over 2. So we would be, when our spinner is pointing at pi over 4, we'd be here at pi over 2. So we have pi over 2, pi over 4. Um, that means that when um, our uh, spinner is pointing at pi over 2, now we're at pi. Okay, so again, it's just increasing twice as fast. So you can just indicate all of these, um, you know, inter important intercepts there um, to show how you understand to graph this spiral. Okay, so I would like you guys to try C and D just so you get practice um, at these on your own. And we're going to get to our next uh, special curve here, the lemniscuit. All right, the graph of our next function, r squared equals four times the cosine of two theta, is gonna produce another very common polar curve. This is called the lemniscuit. Um, I'm pronouncing it as lemniscuit, almost like it's a biscuit, because that's the way it was pronounced on Webster's online dictionary when you click on the pronunciation thing. That's how it said it, um, but I've heard teachers call it lemniscate, lemniscut, um, so who knows how it's really pronounced. It's one of those things like apothem and apothem tomato, tomato, whatever. But anyhow, this graph is gonna be different than what we've graphed before because we have this R squared value, which we have to consider it's gonna produce a, a much different reference graph. Now, we, we are going to create a reference graph for ourselves, but instead of using theta and R, we're gonna use theta and R squared. All right, so if I were to graph four times the cosine of two theta as a rectangular function, um, it would have an amplitude of four and a period of pi, which means it's gonna we're gonna see two full trips um, through. So let's see, from zero to two pi, we make two full trips. Okay. Now um, I graph it like I normally would. So my reference graph looks no different, um, even though I have the r squared right now. Okay. So let's mark all of our intervals. So those are increments of pi over four. So there's pi, two pi, and those I hope you, you can fill in in a second. Okay, now um, when you graph in the polar form for this function, um, we're graphing r, not r squared, right? So really what we're looking at, we're using this reference graph as if we are um, going to take the square root of all of these values. So r squared should be contained, the entire graph should be contained within a circle of radius 2. So if this is one, two units, one, two units, everything in our graph of this function should be contained within this circle, okay? Because if we take the square root here, um, our amplitude would be, the highest that it would be would be two, right? We take the square root of, of, of those values. Now, another thing to consider is the fact that r squared is never negative, right? r squared is always positive. So that means that um, four times the cosine of two theta, if it is negative, Okay, if that produces a negative value, we can't take the square root of that value. Those produce non-real solutions. So R would be non-real, which means that in this portion of the graph, okay, where I have R squared equaling a negative value, those don't actually exist. So again, R squared is never negative. It's always positive. So if this is supposed to be the graph of R squared, these values don't exist whatsoever on our graph what at all okay so I want you to always indicate that like on a test or quiz you would show the graph and you're gonna just dot through the portions of the graph that don't exist now those are um, imaginary numbers there is a way to graph those and that's what we're gonna do in the next section those complex numbers here but for right now we're dealing with real numbers in the real coordinate plane so we're dealing with real numbers in our polar coordinate system okay so we're only gonna pay attention then to these portions that are positive values for r squared, okay? So let's, I'm gonna erase this now and we're gonna um, start with, with graphing this function. All right, so let's plot our first point now, which is going to be at um, two, zero, okay? The reason why it's at two, zero is because when we are at zero radians, it's not a radius of four, because this is r squared. We have to remember that we have to take the square root of that. So like I said before, everything is contained within a circle of radius two. So our first coordinate is two, r is two, and um, our radian measure is zero, so we're right here, okay? Now, as we increase, our radius value, r, decreases till we get to zero. So I've indicated all of the zeros of the function. Those are really important, especially here in this particular graph, okay? So pi over four is kind of acting like an asymptote. 
when you graph this, um, it's not really an asymptote, but it, it's basically showing you that when you graph it, you want to get back to the pole. So you're going to graph it in here like that. So as you increase um, your radian measure, so as the spinner rotates, you are going to decrease your R value. Okay, so you can never really go past pi over 4. Now, um, obviously these values are not real, so we're going to pick back up at 3 pi over 4. So now our spinner, so as it spins through and, and it gets to pi over 4, none of these values are real, so we don't plot anything. But now our spinner is pointing at 3 pi over 4. So once it, it's back at 3 pi over 4 here, we're, we're still at the pole, um, but it's picked back up. And now it's going to increase till we get to another radius of 2 again. Okay, So if you need to, off to the side, write that this is actually 2 or something, because um, it, it is deceptive because it looks like it's supposed to be graphed at 4. So I, I bet that's going to create some confusion here. So maybe even when you, when you graph this, even though this is really r squared, start with a 2 there. Okay. Um, just take the square root of this and you realize that that's 2 times the square root of the cosine of 2 theta. It's just that we can't graph that. That's why we're using still 4 cosine 2 theta as our reference. Anyhow, I'm rambling. Okay, so at 3 pi over 4, spinner's pointing here. It's going to increase from 0 all the way out to 2. So once we get to um, pi here with that spinner rotating, we're back to radius of 2. So we're increasing like that. Okay. Oh, that's kind of terrible, but... There we go. Now, um, from pi to 5 pi over 4, we're decreasing. So we're at pi. Here's 5 pi over 4 for spinners paint, uh, facing this way, tail end over here. Um, now we're decreasing back to 0. So again, that's kind of acting like an asymptote. You don't want to cross that, much, which I just did. But you're going to stay contained within here. And there, we're back to the pole. We pick back up at 7 pi over 4. So as it swings through here, nothing is graphed. But now when our spinner is facing 7 pi over 4, we are at the pole again. And we are going to um, increase till we get to a radius of 2. So we increase till we get to our radius of 2. And that's your graph of the lemnus skit. So as you continue to um, plug in values beyond 2 pi here, you're going to, since it's periodic here, you're going to see these same values repeated. So this is um, the lemnus kit is like a ribbon or glasses or um, the infinity symbol, okay? So that's the other main curve that we're going to see. I think these are cool too. Um, they are tricky though. So this whole R squared idea is very, very tricky. Make sure you understand the connection between the graph, how these values are not real, how we don't graph then between those non-real values um, or between those angle measures. And um, that's about it. Okay, so tomorrow you're going to get some practice with that. Nice job. See you tomorrow.